it was in 2004. I was working very hard and very long hours and my life was becoming a bit limited. In the back of The Friend, which is a Quaker magazine, I found an advertisement looking for people to write to prisoners on death row. Quakers have a deep aversion to violence in any form. We instinctively don't like the death penalty. So I applied and was allocated Carl. Carl Chamberlain was an American. He was on Texas death row for a rape and a murder, which he admitted he had committed. He had been unable to cope with the traumas he had had in childhood and in the military. He had got into drugs and alcohol. And I think he felt as a lot of poorer American people might feel that they are used as cannon fodder. Initially, I was very cautious. I didn't want to write about good things that were happening to me because it seemed a bit mean. But I very quickly realised that prisoners like to pretend they're you. And so I could write about anything. He was exploring all faiths, but he wasn't going to just accept dogma. Quite early on in our friendship, he sent me a tract about how if you died and you hadn't accepted Christ into your life, you would go to hell forever. He was mighty upset by it. And he said, well, what Quakers think about this? When it comes to prisoners on death row, a Quaker will still believe that there is that of God in that person. And so nobody is ever ruled out. I can't remember ever being surprised that he asked to become a Quaker. He wanted to become a member of this meeting. So he became a distant friend. That's what it's called when you're can't go to the meeting that you belong to. Then other people here started writing to him and he used to send poems and occasionally they would be put in one of our publications over here. I saw a change in him. He became much more peaceful in himself, but he also became very sad that he wasn't able to make any sort of reparation. He deeply regretted it and he couldn't forgive himself. It was 2008. Carl was given a date for his execution. I went to my head teacher, who also had strong Quaker sympathies. They gave me compassionate leave. When I said that I was going over, the Quakers supported me. They supported me massively because obviously I had to buy tickets, had to stay in a motel. You know, there were expenses. He wanted his last few days to be, he said, like a sort of party because he was going home. Those of us who could fulfilled his wishes. We visited him as much as we could. And the visiting was more liberal because he was about to die. Some of us went in a small room, very barren, with a plexiglass view onto the chamber where the execution was going to happen. They drew the curtains back and Carl was already strapped to the gurney. He was allowed to give a final talk. And uh, then this chemical was injected into him. It was just absolutely traumatic, yeah. In the late afternoon here, they had a meeting for worship to pray for Carl while he was being executed. He wanted his ashes, or at least some of them, to be scattered here. And so his mum sent them to me. We have this beautiful garden here. And they planted a tree in memory of Carl. It was a silver birch and we scattered his ashes in the garden. Yeah.